We're here at Doncaster Racecourse looking ahead to the Challenge Cup final on Saturday as Hull FC take on Warrington. A huge occasion for all. We'll be hearing from both teams ahead of that match. But first, we're going to look back at round three of the Super 8s and the qualifiers. This is the last tackle. Welcome to the last tackle. We'll be previewing the cup final later on in our show this afternoon. But want to take a quick look back at round three of uh, the uh, Super 8s and the Middle 8s as well. Richard Shaw right in the studio. He's a replacement for Phil Kaplan, who mm, reports say he's been suspended. But we, uh, we can either confirm or deny it. And here, as always, the legend is Gary Schofield. Scott, are you well? Very well, yes. You excited for Wembley? Oh, very excited. Absolutely. And uh, what we've got now in four days after, after today, so... Very excited, exactly the same as what the 33,000 Hull fans are going down there, but I'm sure the players themselves, they know exactly the importance of this game. Hopefully they'll enjoy the build-up because there's nothing like a Challenge Cup final, Mark, and I know people say about the grand final, but this is different, this is national media, this is what the national papers cover, this is what all national journals cover, and we all know it's live at, uh, on terrestrial television, so this build-up, if you're not being used to something like this, which some of the Australians might not do, and some of the Kiwis, or in that side, it's going to be a whole new experience. But what you've got to what you've got to do as a player, it's not the occasion you've got to address. You've got a game rugby league to play, so that's what they've, they've got to try and put that in the back of the mind. Forget about all the family, forget about all the supporters who's going to be there, because that roar when they come out on that pitch, it's something that they won't experience ever again unless they get there. Obviously, uh, next year or years to come. But the experience is going to be great for them. But what they've got to remember is. They've got a game of rugby league to play and a quality side against Warrington. Yeah, and against Hull, of course, if you're a Warrington player. Um, looking at it, we're going to hear from Mark Minicello and Ashton Sims later on, and both of them said this is what they've worked for all their career to play in a game like this. That's how big it is, isn't it? Absolutely. And then I say later would have been watching the Challenge Cup uh, from home many years ago and seen, uh, seen all the build up and seen and seen what it's like to play there and seen many Australians you know, play there and, and had great games and seen Australians who were played there and had poor games as well to be honest with you but uh, no, it's a one off and uh, as I say for mine it's the biggest competition in World Rugby League one thing should be enjoyed but at the end of the day the players are there to play a, ga a game of Rugby League but one thing we're sure we're hoping for Mark is simple we want a classic game don't we? we've not had one yet since we've been to the new Wembley but on paper these two sides should put on a classic for us should do indeed uh, Rich we'll hear from you uh, obviously because uh, well, the magic of TV indeed. we'll be Doncaster in a bit um, pipe and slippers on for the Wildcats though going back to Super League job done now they're on the beach are they well, old boys season finished after that semi-final I know people are upset they talk about effort being put in and this and that and the other but the main question is, would you rather be in the Super 8s, bottom of the table, and not win another game all season, or would you be in the qualifiers and fighting for your Super League lives? I would rather be in this situation. Yes, I'd rather win games, obviously, and it's disappointing to go to a game, which is possibly winnable at winners. You know, two teams evenly matched on the table, but not to be at the moment. Maybe a few players need to uh, buck their ideas up, because, you know, they're still playing for a place in the team in 2017, so... There's still some big games to come. Another derby against Castleford. A game against Catalans, which at the moment, and I'm sure we'll touch on them, is a more than winnable fixture. But uh, yeah, the season ended with that semi-final defeat, sadly. Mm. Looks like the top four's done. Heartbreak for yep. Cass in front in the last 60 seconds, get chinned by Warrington. Well, it is, mate, but also it's, you know, against for 80 minutes, isn't it? You know, but it was, it was a, a short kick-off as well, led to believe, which uh, they got the ball back from there. So, but the game's for 80 minutes. Just maybe that inconsistent, what's cost Cass, but... You know, they'll, uh, they've got the last four games and they want to try and uh, maybe, mathematically they can catch St. Helens, they'll count those four games to go eight points to play for, but uh, you can't really see St. Helens losing all their games. But uh, yeah, Darrell Powell again, uh, pretty happy with the performance, but uh, surely now they're setting up for next year and if they can get that consistency going, then they could be a real threat. Mm, could be indeed. Um, I, I was interested, I shared the press box with you on Friday and I could hear you ranting on about Dave Taylor and the Catalan no, Dragons. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday apologise. Yeah, 44-0 beating at Hull. Now, as good as Hull were, is that the worst Super League performance you've ever seen from a Catalan Dragons side? It is. It is. And uh, can I just say this as well? I'm, le I'm leaving t uh, reading today that Dave Taylor's gone out there and played with a broken rib. Well, I don't believe that, to be honest with you. I don't believe that because I've had broken ribs and I've had a rib cartilage as well. You can't play... And what I will say about uh, the performance from Catalans, if they all had, if they all had the professionalism and the attitude of a Glenn Stewart, you won't be getting embarrassed like you're getting embarrassed now. 
And Dave Taylor, the attitude what he showed on Thursday night was quite simple. He didn't want to be out there. He didn't want to put the shirt on. Even coming out after half time, you could quite clearly see he's a front rower. He was on the wing. What sort of attitude is that showing? Now, I can reassure you, Matt Wilson. I can reassure you, Richard Shaw, right as well. If I was the chairman of Catalans, Dave Taylor, you wouldn't be playing for my club again because your attitude was quite simply not professional enough and it was disgusting. Fair enough. I think that pretty much sums it up. They were, they were awful. They it was not... the worst I've seen. Well, at the end of, you know, again, Fresenew, you, what, what I'm going to question here is, it's quite simple. You look, and we talk about player welfare, if somebody's injured like that, the doctors should be questioned, the physios should be questioned, the players should be questioned, everybody should be questioned from there. And I'm just not having it. And quite, and as I say, I've had broken ribs. I've had a rib cartilage. It's quite, you can't go out there and perform. So for mine, I don't believe that I had a broken rib up there. It's quite simple. His attitude was totally the worst, I would say, the worst I have seen from a freshman of belief player what I saw on Thursday night. Mm, powerful stuff, uh, powerful, powerful stuff. You were at the DW I Friday. Um, not a cl- you weren't happy, were you? Not a classic, is how I would... Well, um, no, I mean, he started off badly getting there late and there'd been no pies in the press box. Oh, disastrous. Much. Disastrous. But, well, I, well, I know. I know. And then, oh. then the game started. And, um, <laughs> He's allowed to buy a pie, you know. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, I was busy working, that was the problem. Um, whether Saints missed Luke Walsh or not, and you know the disciplinary and Kieran Gunning wasn't, I'm blaming Phil Clark. Phil Clark's are apparently on the uh, disciplinary committee according to uh, Kieran Gunning, or whatever they say on Sky. Um, they just didn't turn up, St Helens, and they dropped the ball more than Wigan. It was awful. awful. I, the, the conditions weren't bad. Yes, it was a bit greasy, the uh, pitch, and I know the uh, players not too happy with the uh, ball, as they mentioned earlier in the season, but... Wigan deserved to win, probably deserved to be further in front at half-time. They were the better side and 25-0 is probably a fair reflection on the game. It disappointed for Saints because they went on that seven-game unbeaten streak and you think, oh, there must be, must be something in this Saints side. First time I see him in the flesh, not very good, unfortunately, but can't take anything away from Wigan. I know Sean Wayne was happy, saw him on the big screen. He seemed very happy with uh, some of the uh, Wigan's tries. So, uh, yeah, good performance from Wigan, less so from St Helens. OK, um... It's getting squeaky bum time now in the qualifiers. Now, on Friday, I was with you on Friday because uh, we were at, at the AJ Bell, your we, first visit. We there. did, and we enjoyed some lovely sandwiches as well. We didn't we go did. hungry Beautiful. at Salford, so we apologise for that. It's not really, no. We, we had some nice sandwiches, actually, at Salford. Um, but the uh, sandwiches were better than the Salford performance. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, but to take nothing away from Ulkia, they were outstanding. They knew the importance of that game. Semi-final football, and that's exactly how they played. The first 40 minutes was outstanding, created the opportunities, Albert Kelly getting them around the field, and I say, in, in big uh, Mantell out of the wing, taking his opportunities there, kicking the goals, putting pressure on, uh, on Salford. And I say, the second half, again, 100% completion, just playing the game to their pace, what they wanted, but Salford, how poor was they? And when they're asking their big, play, big players to stand up again, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll put the onus on another player, in Michael Dobson. Michael Dobson, he should know better. He's a quality number seven when he wants to be. But quite simply, he's just not being that leader, what, what they're looking for. And, and again, professional players dropping the ball on the first tackle, the conditions were OK, dropping the ball on the first tackle where there's no pressure. Ian Watson, he could tell with the body language, they didn't understand how big that game was. Well, I'll tell you, Salford players, how big that game was. It's quite simple. You're playing for the future of your club, going into Super League, and you're playing for people's jobs. It's as simple as that. So you better wake up, because I can reassure you, you won't be in Super League if you do that sort of attitude and performance what they put on Friday night. There's been an attitude or an impression uh, that Salford are, are where they are wrongly because of the points deduction. Now, we've got to forget about that now. Well, forget this about is where that. I'm coming That's not an issue this is anymore. What, no, this We've is got what to I'm forget it. To. Don't be making excuses for no, it. No, I'm not making. Listen to what I say. Forget them. I think they're saying, well, we shouldn't be in this position. We'll be all right. We shouldn't be in it. Well, they are in it, and they're not all right, are they? You look at London's performance against Leeds. Yes, they lost, but they put up a very good fight in that game on Saturday. Hull KR are in the top of the uh, in the in fourth. Huddersfield have now picked up a couple of wins, even though they lost the second half against Batley. So they can take something from that. But Lee, three wins from three, big win for them at Featherstone because they had to back up that victory over Salford, and they did go in there. So we've got two teams unbeaten in the qualifiers. One's Leeds, which we expected. And the other's Lee Centurions. You know, we've been talking about perhaps a team will not need the million pound game to be promoted. And at the moment, Lee in the box, and Salford, not even in that game. Well, Lee, Lee, Lee in the box, we were just saying, but we're looking at Salford here, Matt, right? When you, the next four games have got Leeds away, so they're not going to win that. There's no doubt about that, even though they've got the week off. They could have four weeks off and they still won't win that, to be honest with you. But then they've got, the, they've got lucky. They've got the championship clubs, they've got Batley, they've got Featherstone, and they've got London. And you would expect them 
to maybe win them three games. So that will give them eight points and that'll put them in the million pound game. But if they're just scraping through them three victories, what sort of confidence are they going into? It may be, it may be Lee or it may be Ulkis and Rovers again going away from home because they are, they're not going to finish fourth, they're going to finish fifth in the million pound game. I'll tell you what, huge, huge four weeks for Salford. It is indeed. Uh, the question is, are they going to see it through? Are they going to go automatically into Super League, Rich? At the moment, yes. Ask me in a couple of weeks and it be a different answer. He normally sits on the fence. I, I class that as a victory that he's actually mm. given us an opinion. He normally says draw when we ask him. I think, I think Lee are going about everything the right way. As we've mentioned now, for the last, I think, six or seven weeks, attitude is good. They're not uh, making uh, shouting from the rooftops. All the big players are playing well. They're looking forward to this challenge. They're in the mood. I think they're going to qualify automatically. Yeah, I do as well. Let us know what you think at RL on RY. Um, is it Salford that are going to lose their place or should Huddersfield and OKR still be worried? I think there's too much uh, quality. So what I see for OKR, they're, in, they're enjoying They've experienced this. They experienced it last year. They're enjoying this now. They know what to expect. Huddersfield hitting form. I can't see them. It's Salford who are going for me. Well, if League up, though, it means you're more than likely to have two Super League clubs. So is it going to be Huddersfield? In the million pound game? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Well, it's between three, really, isn't it? It's between Salford, Huddersfield and, I, and, and Lee. But uh, if, he, if Lee, they're planning what they're doing and they're doing it very, very well. They're planning what they're doing. They, they, they've got a couple, I think, a couple more games against Aberfeverson and Batley and then they've got one against Super League side at home. So um, if they can get that, they're qualifying from there. Salford's going for mine. Mm, rich. It looks that way, doesn't it? I mean, we all thought about Hulk out at the start of the competition, but they've uh, they've gone to Salford and won, and that was the big game. That was the big game, yeah. Squeaky bum time, and they got the job done. Uh, that's it uh, from uh, the studio point of view, and by the power and the magic of television, uh, Richard and I are shortly going to appear at Doncaster Racecourse as we preview the uh, Challenge Cup final. It's Hull against Warrington. We'll hear from the coaches. We'll hear from some of the key players involved as well and one of the men that will be lifting the Challenge Cup trophy on Saturday afternoon. It's the last tackle. Stay tuned. Welcome to the last tackle then. Uh, myself, Mark Wilson and Richard Shaw right here at uh, the Doncaster Racecourse. Looking forward to, I think, what is, Rich, one of the most an eagerly anticipated Challenge Cup finals for many years? Well, for the first time in a few years, the bookmakers can't split them. Uh, the uh, sponsors are pretty much going uh, as a, a scratch market on this one. So I think that's great, isn't it? We've got a game where we're going into this one and we don't know who's going to win. Last couple of finals, we probably have had a good idea. Certainly last year we did, but this year, not a clue. And the Black and Whites have had two wins in Super League. They're going to meet again in the Super 8s. They could even meet again, either in the playoffs or the grand final. You know, This could be game three of what could be a five-match series. It could well be. I think if you look at the, the form going into this from both teams, I'm not sure if it matters too much, to be honest. I know Warrington had that narrow win over Castleford on uh, Saturday, and it's been a, a couple of easy wins for Hull in the last couple of weeks. But... Does any of that matter going into the game on Saturday at Wembley? I'm not sure it does because both teams have played some great rugby over the season. They've also had some bad points, but they'll be both hoping that come three o'clock when it's uh, when it's kickoff time, they're both uh, ready for the fight. History stands against Hull. Never won at Wembley before. They have won the cup, obviously, famously against Leeds, but they've never done it at Wembley. Do you feel they can overcome that this time? Yeah, I don't think it matters too much. I don't think players will pay too much to superstition and history because they can go out there and become history makers themselves, can't they? And it's a great opportunity for these players, some of them who might be their last chance at Wembley, to become immortal. Because if you, if you do break that hoodoo, you'll be remembered forever. They will be. And we used to say that about Leeds, they can't win at Wembley, and then they went and won it a few times. So it can be done, can't it? And uh, I just think it's interesting. I, I thought the, the pre-match press conference it had the, the air of a, a big pay-per-view boxing match where both fighters or both teams confident that they're going to win. But only one of them is going to win at the weekend. Very jovial Tony Smith, wasn't it? Uh, talking about being the uh, the underdogs uh, for this one, which I guess on the league position is true, but it's going to be an even fight, hopefully a fair fight and hopefully a very good fight as well. It is indeed. Uh, let's hear then from uh, some of the people involved in the Challenge Cup final. We'll start off with a black and white coach, Lee Radford. He's been speaking to the last tackle. All right, the countdown's on now, Lee. <laughs> Excitement building? Yeah, I think um, you know there's been, a, there's been a lift of obviously intensity and excitement in and around the training. Um, 
camp and, and around the group in, in particular so um, it's an exciting week in your career um, whether you're a coach or a player or you're involved in the club in any capacity and, and one you know we want to make the most of. We spoke after the game with the Dragons and you said you've got some bad news to deliver to some guys is that being done yet or when will that be done? Yeah no it's uh, you know that was done today and you know difficult that difficult um, you know, I didn't think it would be as difficult um, as it was receiving the news as giving it but it you know, it's pushed it really close um, because I'm told, you know, some of my friends that they're not going to be involved in obviously one of the biggest games in, in the club's history in a long time. So, um, you know, not something, you know, I want to do again. And, and I hope, I really do hope, and I said this to them all, that we've got an opportunity to play in another final. And, um, you know, I can select them in the 17 because the seasons they've had and the, and the form that they've shown, they probably warrant. Um, some success this year. But that's probably been part of your success, the fact that your squad has competed and done so well, all of them really. Yeah, for sure. And um, I think that, that just shows the strength of the squad as well and, and the strength of the squad that's needed, obviously, you know, to achieve um, trophies on a couple of different fronts. And, and that's, you know, currently where we sat at the moment. And we're playing an opposition on Saturday that are currently in that position as well. So you know, that's going to change for, for one of those teams come Saturday afternoon, late afternoon. Um, hopefully it's not it's not us. Uh, when you put your squad together, as you did at the end of last year, you must have been excited by the talent you had. Have they surpassed your expectations? Um, I think you always believe, you know, you can you can achieve something. Um, but I think I think you know since my first year, I think there was a 14-player turnaround. Obviously, you know changes. I, I openly, you know, publicly stated that they needed to be made for the for the long-term successes of the club. We couldn't have carried on and continued to have paid the salaries that that we was paying and and the return that we was getting back for those players. Um, year two, I think it was a seven-player turnaround, um, and next year it'll be a two-player turnaround. So, I think we've we're steadily going in the right direction. Um, but yeah, this group that we put together, you know, I'm hoping. Um, it can achieve the the success that it's that it's capable of achieving. And what would it mean to you to bring the first Challenge Cup win at Wembley to the black and white? Yeah, I'm hoping I'll never have to buy a pint in a pub in, in Hull again. You know, that's um, that's the ultimate aim. Um, it's a special, you know, it would be a special achievement for this club. Myself personally, it's um, something I'm reminded of frequently. Obviously, not never been able to win in the the nation's capital. So hopefully, we can take a black and white army down there with us on on Saturday and and right some wrongs. So Lee Radford then looking ahead to the cup final he said the hard bit's been done he missed out on a couple of finals himself of course he knows what it's like to have to deliver that bad news he's delivered it today and I guess you know we'll hear Tony Smith talk about it as well we look past it it's all great isn't it but for some guys they are going to miss out this weekend yeah and I was speaking to uh, Jack Hughes of Warrington earlier and, and he, he missed out a couple of years ago for Wigan and he was saying how, how gutting it was the team won the trophy but he missed out on the occasion so for those players who've missed out obviously it's going to be awful for them but they know now don't they the, the, the players who are going to be in that uh, squad going to be walking out at Wembley on Saturday no, and I guess it gives them plenty of time to either prepare well or the nerves to build up and I guess you know you can't predict how you're going to react when you walk out there in front of uh, hopefully close to a sellout attendance yeah looking forward to it um, please for Lee Radford it was under real pressure wasn't he certainly at times last season Adam Pearson stuck with him and I think it's fair to say he's got his uh, rewards hasn't he well I think it shows if you uh, stick by your coach who you think is going to do a good job in the future and he goes on and does it doesn't he and they were able to spend the end of last season bringing in young players, give them a chance in the first team at Hull. Some of them will be out there on the field on Saturday. But they've got so many great leaders out there, haven't they, as well? It's, it's a great mix of young, exciting players and the, the, the leaders like Gareth Ellis. But you've also got the factor of Mark Sneed, who possibly fair to say a couple of years ago for Castlewood against Leeds froze on the big occasion he can make amends for that on Saturday afternoon he can indeed uh, let's hear now from the Warrington perspective then let's hear from their coach Tony Smith and despite the fact that the Wolves have won several times at Wembley in recent years he's quick to point out there's not too many of his current squad have had that experience of running out at Wembley looking forward to it and uh, it's you know it's a very special um, game to be part of and um, Challenge Cup final is you know, part of rugby league diary each year. You know, it's the big match. It's the flagship of our sport, where most people tune into both, both in this part of the world and also as a as an Australian or former Australian. 
from a very early age used to ch uh, tune into the Challenge Cup. It's it's the one game of the year. If you don't watch any other British games, you'd watch the Challenge Cup. And looking at it, with the way the cup format is, we don't necessarily always get the best two teams in the final, but the feeling is this year, that's what we're getting. Yeah, that's right. You know, I think that's good every now and then, but that's the beauty of the cup. The underdogs, you know, the underdog. Um, uh, 2009, we came 10th in Warrington um, in the regular season and won the Challenge Cup. I think that's fantastic. And what you're saying, you're giving a whole lot of teams a, a bigger, a better chance of winning something, and that's what the cup can bring. But you know, this year it's fallen that that the teams coming one and two at the moment um, have fallen as as Challenge Cup uh, contenders. So you know, it's. It's not always the norm, but um, I think it's it's good that other teams do get there, and it's not just one and two competing every year. I think it would soon lo lose interest if that was how it was uh, for a number of years on end. Yeah, and looking at, at the game, I mean, it's an exciting matchup across the board from one to seventeen. There's battles all over the field, isn't there? There is. Yeah, I think so. I think they're pretty evenly matched teams. Uh, we haven't been able to defeat them this year and uh, they've been hard fought games on each occasion but uh, you're right they've, they've been competitive and there's some great matchups and very talented boys and you know two big packs and, and some real talented uh, backs as well so uh, yeah it's, it's hard to know where to stop them um, you know they've got a lot of strength across the park but at the same time I think you know we can ask some questions across the park as well so it should be good. So Tony Smith then uh, speaking to the last tackle. Uh, it's been another good year for Warrington. Uh, it's interesting both Hull and Warrington off the pace last year, but this year they're really fighting on all fronts. And it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Not just what happens on Saturday, Rich, but whether they do meet again. And, and if one team can go on and, and complete the clean sweep. Well, as we saw with Leeds in the last couple of years, and it, it's almost forgotten and written out of history last year, isn't it? Because they won the league leader shield with that last second try at Huddersfield. But their form dropped after Wembley and it dropped the year before. So whether, I, but, well, whichever team wins on, on Saturday has to overcome that uh, with the rounds of the Super 8 because there's still a league leader shield to win. At, both are assured of a place in the top four, so they haven't got that to worry about necessarily, but they'll want that league leader shield, that extra piece of trophy, and get the form going in there to the semi-finals because as we know, Warrington haven't been champion since 1955. They'll be as much as we talk about Hull's who do at Wembley. Warrington are desperate to break that one as well. Both could happen this year. We don't know. Or one team could win the treble. We've said it for the last few months. This team's going to win the treble. This team's going to win the treble. This team's going to win the treble. Neither may win the treble, but both have got a very good chance of starting off. They have indeed. Uh, let's hear now from a couple of the players involved there and a couple of overseas players as well. There's no doubt Mark Minicello has been outstanding this season for the Black and Whites and he is very, very excited at the prospect of turning out for the Black and Whites at Wembley this weekend. Oh, having never won at Wembley, they've won the Cup but never at Wembley, so there's a chance for you to become a history maker for the Black and Whites. Yeah, that's um, yeah, something I really want to do, do when I set out to um, yeah, play with Hull is... Um, yeah, help them achieve and, and win win some uh, silverware and you know this is our first opportunity to do that and and um, like you said they've never won at Wembley it um, you know, can go down in history as the first team ever it'd be um, you know something really special and of course you said a chance to win silverware there's another two things up for grabs as well but first things first a cup can you believe the turnaround in the black and whites this season yeah I can you know we um, we were there you know or thereabouts uh, last year, we we were we were good enough. But we just weren't weren't consistent enough, and um, you know we, we we beat top sides last year, but we, we lacked um, consistency in a few areas. And um, you know we we sat down and, and talked about that, and we, we worked really hard in the preseason, and um, you know gave ourselves every opportunity to perform week in week out on the field, and you know everyone's done a great job from from the coaching staff to the players. So um, you know it's it's just reward for for everyone involved um, that we're, we're at Wembley and, and have a chance to, to write history. And f for a neutral point of view, we're looking at it, the best two teams in the competition. This is a final everyone wants to see. What do you make of Warrington? Yeah, they're, they're a great side. They, they play some great attacking football. Um, you know, they, they play fast uh, like we do. We, we like to play up tempo. And, um, you know, both both games that we've played them this year has been uh, yeah, very close and, uh, you know, could have went either way. So, um, you know, I expect the intensity to be, you know, right up there in this game. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, 
we're lifting the cup at the end. And looking at it, family, Australia, they, will they be all tuning in to watch you? Yeah, well, they're, they're flying over, so um, mum, dad and my sister and, and cousin are, are going to fly over and um, you know support us. They, they land tomorrow, so looking forward to um, seeing them and um, you know having them in the crowd and hopefully uh, celebrating with all of them uh, at the end. This is what it's all about, isn't it, Mark? All the training throughout the winter in the dark, you know, the dark months <laughs> on hull when it's raining and snowing. This is what it's all about, isn't it's, it? It certainly is. Uh, you know, you don't want to run out on the field when it's uh, one degrees and raining and cold. And but uh, you know, we we do it. And um, you know, like you said, that this is this is what it's all about. This is uh, why you go through all those uh, you know tough training sessions and you know to prepare yourself as best you can for for occasions like this. They don't come around very often, and uh, when they do, you got to grab them. So um, you know, hopefully uh, we can do that uh, on uh, Saturday. So Mark Minicello then speaking, uh, he's got family coming across. It, it, I think we sometimes overlook what a big occasion it is for these guys, especially the overseas guys. They don't have anything like the, the Challenge Cup final, Rich, in Australia. And uh, I think Minicello, he has been outstanding. That, for me, he'd be up there in, in running for the Man of Steel. Oh, certainly. You look at him and, and Gareth Ellis have been superb for Hull this year, haven't they? And I guess it's that we, we, we go back to our youths and uh, the players will talk about this as well. And it's that one game that they show every year on Australian TV, or, or it was traditionally and of course now they can watch pretty much everything but it was always Wembley the uh, bright summer stroke spring afternoon and uh, all the great memories that I've made under there and it's a big occasion and, and they don't have anything like that in Australia you're right it's, it's, it's strange that they haven't cottoned on to that maybe they don't want to play more games I feel Capital would be very happy about that but it, it's it's a great occasion for everyone, isn't it? It's across the rugby league world, whether you're here or in Australia or New Zealand or, or in Fiji, you know, we, we talk about the Pacific Islanders with Frank Pritchard and his uh, fantastic pink and black boots he's got specially uh, designed for the uh, final on Saturday. It's an occasion for the whole world of rugby league. It is indeed. Uh, let's say then from uh, one of Warrington's overseas stars, Ashton Sims, who started by telling us this is what his whole career has been aimed at. Ashton, Challenge Cup final week. You go to Wembley. What does that feel like? Mate, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, I've, I've waited. I've debuted in 2003, so I've waited about 13, 14 seasons for this. And uh, you know, it's, it's for an opportunity to, to play in a, in, in a major final is you know, it's it's honestly, it's it's just a massive thrill. You've been involved in coverage on the TV, building up to it, so you know what it's all about. This is a massive game. Isn't yeah, it's it? huge, isn't it? Yeah, I, you know. Looking back at it at home, you know, I always knew it was a pretty big game, and but but since coming over here and and um, you know just feeling the, you know the juice of everyone, like you know the people around, how much it means to everyone, it's uh, it's more than I bargained for. So, um, you know, it just put so much more excitement in a in a Saturday afternoon. And I guess this is what you train, like you said, all those years training, running up hills and whatever. Yeah. This is what it's all for, isn't oh, it? Oh, 100 percent, man. This is yeah, you know, this makes it all worth it. Um, you know, just. Just you know those early morning starts, those, those late night finishes, the um, times you what, what you put your body through. This is you know if it all comes to this, you know I'd do it all all, all over again. And it's not often we get the best two teams in the competition at Wembley, and this is I think what it's a game that's exciting everyone. It is, isn't it? Yeah, first, first, second. You know, two two of the form teams of the competition, and um, you know I think it's going to be a real good battle out there. It's it's um, you know two two big packs and two very skillful back lines uh, going against each other so um, you know it should be a good one for the spectators for us we're excited watching it what's it going to be like playing in it because they're a big pack the week uh, the, sorry the whole boys oh yeah yeah they certainly are man they you know they, they um, you know pack some punch in there and and um, so we're going to have to be right on our game and you know we've got some big forwards in our, in our pack too so we're uh, you're going to be looking forward to a challenge quite a lot of your mates have already been to Wembley with the Wolves and won what, have you spoken to them about the experience you're about to go through yeah yeah most certainly you know you'd be silly not to I think uh, you know the, the guys who have gone before us um, you know, I think you know. Think of the Adrian Morleys, the the, the Monaghan brothers, um, you know, Matty King, guys like that. You just you just want to be so a part of that. Lee Briz, who's who's one of our coaches at the moment, and he, um, you know, he spoke up in video this morning about how big of a week it is and how good, you know, how good of a day it is. So, um, you know, you just want to be part of that. You know, want to be part of that victory. Want to be part of that. Um, you know, you know the whole the whole thing that that it's about. Nice touch from Warrington, Ashton Sims there, he said that Simon Moran, the, the Warrington owner, has arranged for his dad to come over and you know, you could tell that meant a lot to Ashton Sims. I guess it's little things like that, isn't it, that, that make Warrington such a, a good club to play for? Well, we've got two well-run clubs here, haven't we? And uh, it, it, it signs of what Super League clubs should be in both the way Hull 
and Warrington are one. And it's a nice. To, it, I mean, can you imagine? You can't imagine, can you, walking out on that field and knowing that your family are there, ready to watch you win or lose. It's just a great occasion. I mean, you know how I feel about it because uh, I, <laughs> I get emotional just standing there in the uh, press box at Wembley because it means so much to so many people. But it's going to be a great. I, I just can't wait because, as we've said, it's going to be a great final. And look at those two packs. Yes, both teams have got great backs, great three quarters, but you can have two big packs bashing into each other on Saturday afternoon. It's going to be an absolute belter. It is indeed, and as part of that big hole pack, it's probably one of the littlest, littlest men on the field. Danny Houghton has been outstanding so far again for Hull FC this season, and he's excited by the prospects. He could become a history maker uh, as part of the first Hull FC team to win at Wembley. Here's what he had to say to the last tackle. Danny, you stand on the verge of history with Hull FC. That must be a, an exciting prospect. Very exciting. Obviously, tasting defeat in 2013 was, you know, one a great day for a great day for us. So, you know, hopefully we can can put that to bed and hopefully we can create history for ourselves and uh, be a special day and a special occasion if we could. What would it mean to you to be a part of a whole team that was the first one to win at Wembley? It'd mean I've, you know got my boy, boy a dream was to, to win the Challenge Cup with Hull FC so if I can do that you know, I can I can die an happy man <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky at it I mean it's been an amazing season so far hasn't it but I guess it's what happens now in the closing couple of months of the season that will define just how good a season it's been yeah that's right it's, this sport's about, about lifting silverware and we've not lifted any silverware at the moment so you know, that was our goal at the beginning of the year was to, to lift some silverware and we're, we're one step away from, from doing that so no, we're really focused on the job in hand and hopefully we can do it. Can you believe the turnaround that the boys have, have conjured up really after what happened last year? I can't know, but I, I can as well because you know, the, the group of players we've got, it, you know, it, it speaks for itself and you know, we're a real family club and we're, we're a real cl really close group, group of boys and we, you know, we do a lot of things together and you know, it's probably the best group of, group of players I've ever played with and it's not just not just performance-wise, like off the field, the, the things we do together, it's... No, it's a real special special time for the club, I think. Because everyone was excited with the signings that were made at the start of the year, but those signings have got to come in, they've got to fit in, and they've yeah. got to do a job. And to be fair, they have, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they've they've surpassed everyone's expectations. I think, you know, to to come in, especially the overseas boys as well, to come in in the first season and perform like they have done, it's it's testament to them because we well, we know that in the past people have come over and really struggled in the first season, so. No, the the great guys as well, and I'm really pleased for him. It's you know, real chuffed. And just going back to the last time you were there, like you said, not the happiest of experience, but is that experience now paying dividends for you this week? Because you know what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, that's you know it. What to expect. Now. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. It's it's more we we know what's we know what's to come. We know that you know the main focus is is, is winning the Challenge Cup, not not to get carried away in photos and. You know, looking at the beautiful stadium, it is. It's it, it's more about you know getting down there and getting the job done rather than you know, taking the scenery in and you know getting carried away and all that nonsense, really. So Danny Houghton, I won't say unsung hero, Rich, but he's just that good every week that you take him for granted, don't you? Well, this is the great thing about the Hull side. We've mentioned three Man of Steel candidates already. Could probably throw in a few more because they are a great team. And that's why they are top of the table. That's why we're in this Challenge Cup final at Wembley on Saturday. And, and Houghton's one of those players that makes them tick, moves them around the field so well. And as I say, they're just a, they're just a great team to watch. Both teams I would pay money to watch. I mean, I, I saw Warrington in the semi-final destroy my team, but they were a joy to watch because of the way they play rugby league. And the same for Hull as well. Slightly different style. You'd probably say Hull more dominant in the forwards perhaps, but still you can put a, a cigarette paper between the two sides that come Saturday and a lot of people who are watching the Challenge Cup final will be ex excited to see the talent that is Stefan Ratchford as well he's another one that's had a fantastic season for the Warrington Wolves uh, here he is speaking to the last tackle this is a big game I think it's the one the neutrals wanted to see as well the top two com uh, in the competition what do you make of Hull yeah they're a, they're a great side we've had two two real tough battles with them this year I think we you know the first game went down to two points and then I think last time it was nip and tuck until the last couple of minutes and they I think they nicked a try and a drop goal and, and kind of won with, with a bit of bigger margin but yeah they've been real consistent this year the, I think the side that they've had out has been you know majority of the same side they've been really lucky with with the players they've had available you know week in week out but um, for them to perform like they have you know it's fully credit to them fully credit you know to the to the coaching staff the way they've performed and you know the consistency they've had has been really impressive.
And ahead of a, such a big game like this, what, what's the mindset of the play? Is it, a, it must be completely different to a normal Super League game. Yeah, you're probably, probably more the mental side of it. You know, you don't want to, you know, burn all your energy up with that, that nervous energy, you know, thinking about the game too much early in the week. So, like I said, we've just got to focus on, you know, probably getting an, an intense start to the week, but, you know, trying to not overthink stuff and, and overplay it already in your mind. So it's, like I said, you've just got to try and keep calm, have that intensity about you, but, you know, that calmness with it as well. And I'm sure, you know, come Thursday, Friday, Obviously, the morning of the game, that's when you can start really switching on mentally. And given the makeup of the top four at the minute, there's every chance that you two might be meeting again further down the line in the grand final. It, there's a real intensity now at the top of the table, isn't it? You're fighting for everything. There is, yeah. I think if you look at the you know, the top three teams, I think there's probably is a two points separating top and third. So, like I say, it's, there's a lot still still to play for. Obviously, the, the first chance is, is this week and then... Like I said, we've got to play Hull still in the eights and then we might get them again in the semis or the final. Yes, yeah, so there's like I said, there's a lot of opportunity, you know, still to still to play for this year. There's free trophies still available and like I said, there'd be no better way to start off by by taking the first one. So Stefan Ratchford, another and, and this is the exciting thing, Rich. You want a seventeen or whatever squad number they've got, there's a match up everywhere all across the field and Ratchford's another talent that I think we all want to see have a big game on Saturday. I certainly so. I, I I think it's just and I keep repeating myself, but it's true. It's going to be a great final. We hope it's a great final. So many times in the past, you can look in the history of sport, games have been built up to be something and then the complete opposite. But I think we've got the right teams, the right coaches, the right players on the field, that it should be a fantastic game. They're going to go out there and give everything. There's going to be nothing left on that field. No one's going to come off and think, I should have done more there because it, it's not going to be that kind of game. We've seen plenty of fairy tales at Wembley. Will it be a fairy tale for the Black and Whites looking for their first win at Wembley? Let's hear then from their talisman, Gareth Ellis. He's been speaking to Tom Maguire. Wembley, only a few days away. How are you feeling? Yeah, excited. Excited more than anything. Obviously, it's um, opportunities like this are few and far between. It's probably something that I've learnt to uh, I've learnt over the over the years is just how scarce these uh, these big games can be um, so it'd be one that you know particularly at 35 now it's it'd be one you know one that we need to go out there and make the most of do you think it's it'd be good to try and get that monkey off Hull FC's back you know win at Wembley it's funny I don't feel it you know I don't feel that sort of pressure as, as a as a as a player I just see it as an opportunity to go there and, and win the Challenge Cup something that I've dreamed of doing you know since I was a kid you know um, I said in the press conference you know I when I was grew up watching the um, watching the Charles Cup final, all I wanted to do was play in the curtain raiser, you know, before, and, and now I find myself playing in, in these big games, you know, for the in in the full match. So it's exciting stuff um, and, and something that we're all looking forward to. But obviously, we are aware of just the, you know the the uh, the stigma attached to the whole team that's never never won a Challenge Cup at Wembley. So it's going to be a good game, first v second. Might not be the only time that you play for, you know, possibly some yeah. silverware this season. Do you think that it might be good to get this first win? Oh, it'd be great. <laughs> it'd be great to get this win. Obviously, like I said, for all those personal reasons, for all those, you know, team reasons and club reasons. Um, but yeah, I think it's quite fitting, really, that the, the top two teams, as it stands at, at this, this moment, are in the are in the Challenge Cup final. Um, you know, speaking to other people, I felt it's been a bit mismatched you know, over the last few years and not 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 been the spectacle that it deserves and. You know who knows this this week, um, but I'm, like I said, with the top two teams going at it, you'd expect a, a close a close match if nothing else. Do you get nervous with the idea of possibly playing in front of nearly eighty thousand people? Yeah, certainly. I, I get nervous before most games anyway. You know, it's just one of those things. I think it's not quite knowing what's going to happen, um, but but knowing in your in your mind you want to win, you want to win everything out there, and um, it doesn't always go that way. And I think that's what creates those nerves. But I think I've let the occasion get the better of me in the past. You know, in, in terms of these big games, so it's something that obviously I'd like to think I've learnt from and um, and can go out there and give and be the best I can be on Saturday afternoon. So Gareth Ellis then, uh, phenomenal player, you know, ultimate professional, I think that's how I would assess him. Um, if he plays well, there's every reason to think that uh, possibly all are going to win the final. I've said before, Mark, I think he's uh, perhaps underappreciated in certain uh, sectors because if you look at his career, uh, now at Hull as the elder statesman, but his career in the NRL, 
did sterling work for West internationally for England and Great Britain for Leeds winning a grand final and coming through the ranks at Wakefield in a team which was you know getting beaten a lot of the time but he was appointed captain at a very young age played second row centre standoff even and uh, led Wakefield in the playoffs when they were so close to knocking Wigan out so I've grown up watching Gareth Ellis. I couldn't believe he's 35. I'm the same age as Gareth Ellis. He's achieved slightly more than I have in at Rugby League. But I always thought he was much younger. But I guess that's a testament to how well he plays. I don't know if he'll feel 35 when he comes off that pitch on Saturday. He might feel about 75. But he's a player who the fans know and the players alongside him, more importantly, know he's going to give everything. And that means they have to give everything as well. Does indeed. I think we're all looking forward to the Challenge Cup final on Saturday. I think the only thing to say, may the best team win. We'll be back to review it all next week on The Last Tackle.